Today in this video, we are going to learn a poem of class 8. The name of the poem is Leisure and it's written by W.H. Davies. So let's quickly read the poem and understand the whole theme and the summary of the poem. But before that, if you're watching my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification of all the upcoming videos. Do watch the video till end and if you like it, do hit the like button. So let's move ahead now, but there's one more good news for you all that my dear students said we have come up with the Scorpio class Hindi channel and this channel is uploading videos of Hindi lessons explanation, which announces videos and the grammar syllabus videos of class 8, 9 and 10. So to get the link of this channel, you will have to visit the description box and find the link and subscribe to the channel. You will also find the link in the i button above so that you can directly go to the channel and subscribe to it. Also share it with your friends. So with this news, let's move ahead now and learn something about a poet before starting the poem. So as we all know, the poet is W.H. Davis. He is William Henry Davis. He was born in 1871 and he lived till 1940. He was one of the most popular poets of his time. The principal themes, means the main themes in his works are the marvels of nature and observations about life's hardships. We find simplicity and the use of native tongue in his poems. Most of his poetry is on the subjects of nature or life on the road. It exhibits a natural, simple and earthy style. Okay? Means it's very much related to our lives. All his poems are based on the real work, the marvels, the wonders of the nature and the observations which we have in our life, its hardships and struggle. So we find such kind of themes in the works of W.H. Davis. So let's move ahead and look at today's poem that what do we learn in this? So let us quickly see about the poem. So Leisure by W.H. Davis is an incredible poem about taking time to look around and notice the beauty that every day holds. Okay, so this is a very good and interesting poem which has, uh, which has motivating lines for the for me readers to look around the, the nature, to look around the world and notice the beauty that every day holds in it. Okay, Davis does a wonderful job of opening the eyes of all those who read this marvelous work. So the one who are reading this poem, you are going to get a new spark in life or something. You, have, you are going to get, to get to know something new about the world, about the beauty which is hiding behind this nature. And we are failing to see and observe it. So when you read this poem, you will get to know what are those and how you can find it out. And how we are busy in our own world. That is what this poem is trying to say us. Now, it teaches us that we need to slow our lives down and take a look around <clears throat> and notice the little things. So this poem it teaches us that to, to slow our lives means we are so busy in our lives that we are ignoring the nature's beauty. We fail to notice so many small things which can bring a very big difference or, a, or make the whole day very happy for us. Okay, Then we should take advantage of the little time that we have on this earth and pay attention to the little things. So he says, whatever small life or little time we have with us on this earth, we need to pay attention to those small little things which happens every day or which we are failing and we are ignoring every day and that would make our day and our life and we can observe and understand the beauty of the nature. So this is what we are going to learn in this poem. So let's move ahead and know more about this poem. So this poem is a couplet kind of poem. Now what is couplet? So a couplet is a pair of lines of meter in poetry. It usually consists of two lines working as a unit that rhyme and have the same meter. Okay, means it's a pair of two lines. After every two lines, you have gap, the next two lines start, and these two lines have the same rhyming words and same meter, same format is used to, for the entire poem. 
Now this poem leisure has rhyming couplets and leisure is a 14 line poem and it's called as sonnet. Okay. So like this we have seven pairs means 14 line and this poem is called a sonnet because it is having a 14 line in it. So this is about the poem. Now let's quickly read the exact poem line by line and understand it. So what is this life if full of care we have no time to stand and stare? No time to stand beneath the bows and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass where squirrels hide their nuts and grass. No time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like skies at night. Okay, so let us understand first these lines and then we'll go ahead. So in the first two lines, in the first couple of lines, what is this life if full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. So the poet is saying, what is the use of this life? If we are caring so much, we are so busy, but we have no time to stand and stare. Means we have no time to stand and look at the beauty of the nature, to observe it minutely. There are so many beautiful things that, uh, that are just in and around us, but we fail to notice it. We are not observing it. We are not looking also at, uh, at it. Why? Because we are so busy, we are so much in stress and tension and always in our own world. The same, what is this life? What is the use of this life? We are caring so much, but we have no time to stand and look at the beauty and the, uh, the nature. Next, he says, no time to stand beneath the bows and stare as long as sheep or cows. Then he says, nobody has time to stand beneath the bows. Now, bows are the branches of the trees, okay? We don't have time to stand beneath the tree, under a tree and stare. Means keep gazing or keep seeing as long as sheep or cows. Okay, we see sheep or cows who stand beneath, beneath the tree, under the tree. And for a longer time, they keep standing, they observe the nature, they eat grass, they, and they keep on uh, spending time over there. But we humans, we don't have so much of time. And we cannot do this. We are not doing all these things. We don't have any time at all. Our life is so busy. We don't have any leisure time. Okay. Now, no time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. Now, we don't have any time when we pass through the woods or when we pass through the forest. When we are traveling from one place to another, we are in such a hurry that we fail to notice in the forest areas that where squirrels hide their nuts and grass. We have so many small animals uh, which, who are there, who lives in that forest. And where the squirrels hide their nuts and the grass, it's so interesting to see. Now, once you read this, you're getting interesting uh, to see all the stuffs, like how the squirrels hide their nuts in the grass and later on they eat that, right? So these are the small things which can be very exciting, but we don't have time and we ignore it. We don't see that because we don't have leisure time. We don't have any free time. Okay, we are so busy in our world. The next couplet says, no time to see in broad daylight, streams full of stars like skies at night. So we don't have time to see the colorful streams. Okay, in the broad daylight, in the, on the sunny day, the streams, the water bodies, they are full of stars, just so twinkling as if it's full of stars. Okay, when the sun rays or sunshine falls on the streams, on the water bodies, it shines so brightly as if it's full of stars. In the same way as we have skies at night filled with stars. So it looks as beautiful as the night sky during the broad daylight when you see the stream. But we don't have time to see all this and observe this. So we are ignoring and we are failing to observe the nature and its beauty. Okay. So these are the things for it is saying. Now let's move ahead. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet, how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life this is, if full of care, we have no time to stand and stare, okay? Then uh, the poet says there's no time to turn and see at the beauty of a lady who's 
uh, wearing such a beautiful attire, how well she can dance. And we don't have time to see at her beautiful face where she smiles. Okay, we are ignoring all these things and going. We don't have time to uh, stop and watch at this. Now, watching the lady is not exactly watching the lady, but it's about watching the beauty. The, the poet has just used it as a comparison. Okay, so that means that we don't have any time or no leisure time with us to see any beauty of the nature or observe any beauty of the nature. So the, at last, uh, the poet says, in the last couple of lines, he says, a poor life this is, a full of care, we have no time to stand and stay. Means this life is poor life. What the life, the busy life, what we're spending, it's a poor life. If we don't have time to stand and stay and observe this beautiful nature, if we don't have time to observe and enjoy this nature these small things which are there in nature which are so beautiful we ignore it and if you are failing to notice it that means we are living a very poor life it's not a healthy life it's not a good life so we need to take out some leisure time from our busy schedule and observe the nature relax ourselves relax our mind and then it will be a good life so with these few lines, poet is trying to say us how to take out some leisure time and observe the nature and its beauty. So with these few lines, we come to an end. I hope you understood the poem and the summary of the poem. So if you liked it, do hit the like button and share it with your friends. And stay tuned as we'll be back soon with more such videos. Till then, stay safe and take care. Thank you.